Today I've brought you down to the fantastic River Don at the Earth Centre. This is a man-made stretch of water. It's about probably 11 foot deep on nearly every swim. It's full of bream, it's full of roach, skimmers, perch. When the water's up slightly, this, it's possible to catch big weights of bream, but today I've come to show you how to catch the roach and skimmers and perch using a pencil float. Now this place is owned by Rotherham and District and it's just four pound a day for a day ticket. And it's a great place to come and fish. You're out of the, the way, you're almost out in the wilds. It's, it's a fantastic stretch of water. One of the first floats that I started to develop in the AS range was the pencil float itself. And the AS pencil, it ranges from 0.5 of a gram up to three gram. So you've got all intermediate sizes of floats. Now before I run you through the style of the pencil float that I've used today, I want to tell you a little story. Right, some years ago I was fishing on a, a river similar to this pace-wise, the River Neen. And I was fishing, catching roach, to sort of two, three, four ounce size fish. Quite small fish, but there were quite an abundance of them. And I were next to a very, very good international angler. But I'd been playing around for a while with pencil floats and I'd started to realise how good they were when the fish were quite difficult to catch. And I set up this particular day and the, the guy below me, this international angler, had set up three gram round bodied type floats to combat some of the flow that was on the water. Now I'd rigged up with pencil floats up to three gram and what happened that day really cemented to me the importance of using thin floats for these smaller sizes of fish. Now I finished up catching around about eight pounds and the lad who was next to me caught about a pound and a half of roach. He could not hook a single bite. And this is where pencil floats work really well. When you're catching these sizes of fish, because they're slim, the fish doesn't feel the resistance of the body of the float at all. So you hook miles more bites. It's incredible how well they can work in these sort of circumstances. It's got a stainless steel eye right at the top of the float also. And of course, even when you're running through, you can slow the float down slightly. I always think that fishing for roach, you're better off fishing at the pace of the current. But of course, with this float, with the eye right at the top near the bristle, it's possible to slow the bait down fractionally as well, if there's more pace than normal. The base of the float is just a stainless steel bottom, and this helps the float to sit in the water. Now, how did I approach today? Because the water's quite deep, I've set up to fish with ground bait. The G5 ground bait from Vandenind is brilliant for fishing on rivers like this because it has a big percentage of brown crumb in it. Mixing it so it's slightly on the wet side and then allowing it to dry out for 10, 10 or 12 minutes while I've been down the bank finishing the equipment off and then added a little more water and spun it together with the drill. You just want the ground bait to bind nicely. You don't want it putty-like, but just so it binds together nicely to get to the bottom. To the ground bait then, I've added casters, hemp, and also pinkies. I'm already expecting to catch quite a lot of fish today, so put quite a bit of bait in at the start, and you can see using a measure reminds you of how much bait you've put in on each session that you fish. So that was cupped in down the peg, maybe about three to four meters down from straight in front. And I cupped in about three liters of ground bait with the ingredients of the, the casters, the pinkies, and also the hemp mixed into it. This made probably about 15 balls that I potted in, in a, spread it out slightly, maybe over sort of a meter area, 
but try to form a nice bed to run the float over. It is important to fish slightly down the peg when you're fishing with a pole and three to four metres down allows you to set up the float and run over the ground bait area. Today with the pace I rigged up just two rigs, one a gram and a half and one two gram. An 11 foot of water in front of me that presented the bait really well. One big mistake that I see lots and lots of anglers make is fishing with too short a line when they're fishing on a river like this and fishing with a pole. If you have a long line to the float, you can cover a lot of area of the swim. And this is one mistake that you know, is easily rectified. Just leave the rig long when you plumb up and have a long line to the float. You'll catch a lot more fish. The reason you'll catch more fish is because you can cover all of the swim. You can catch those fish over the ground bait and you can also catch fish below the ground bait where the loose feed will be hitting the bottom. Putting the rig in the water today was quite difficult because there were a lot of bleak present. But when them bleak aren't there, I like to lower the float in. So I put the olivet into the water and then lower the rig down to the olivet. And what this does, it straightens all the tackle out below and you're presenting the bait as best you can straight away, right at the top of the swim and preparing it to run over that ground bait area. And of course, every run through today, I fed either some hemp or maggots, just to keep the fish in that area right over the ground bait. When the rig's presenting properly, you can almost lower it in and you can get that float just traveling. What you're trying to do is run at the pace of the current, but just very fractionally lean that float over. And I'm only talking just a fraction and once you get that float running through the swim, that's the best presentation that you can get. Anywhere where you've got a medium pace river like this, pencil floats are fantastic for this type of fishing. Don't take my word for it. Get yourself out any slow moving river or here at the Earth Centre, River Don. Try a pencil float, you'll be amazed how many more bites you get and how many more fish you hook. It's a great way to fish.